Hello there, this is Dr. Mintz. This is a CT abdomen and pelvis in a patient that's recently status post gunshot wound. Uh, I'll give you a chance to look over the entirety of the images. I like to peruse the CT abdomen and pelvis from top to bottom once or twice before I start digging into the individual structure. So there we go down and then go back up and take a look and see if you catch uh, if anything catches your eye okay looks like something's going on in that left kidney here something in that right kidney also we'll get back to those things there okay but first we have to make sure we go through our list of major structures so so that we don't run any risk of leaving out an area or structure in our evaluation so I go through the liver first. Now the liver has several small high attenuation foci. Some of these look like they might be just calcifications and granulomata or granulomas of the liver can produce calcifications. Uh, these don't show the beam hardening artifact I would expect for metal. And if you don't know what I mean by beam hardening artifact, I'll show you here is definitely a piece of metal, and this is an artifact because of this, the very high density of metal. It causes these radiating uh, artifacts that are called beam hardening artifacts. So there's some metal there in, in the liver, whether these are additional pieces of metal or I think not because I don't see beam hardening artifact, but they're sufficiently small that they may not produce beam hardening artifact. But that's it for the liver. The spleen, there's some fluid overlying the convexity of the spleen, the lateral aspect of the spleen. And I don't really see free fluid to speak of in that vicinity otherwise. And I don't see uh, a fluid collection. This is fluid here under the left hemidiaphragm, but that looks like it's associated with the spleen. Uh, so a subcapsular uh, hematoma is a possibility, but usually that would have more of the appearance of the, the shape of the convexity of the spleen. And I don't see this following that very closely. Here you can see it's going off. So it I think what we have is a splenic injury though. The margin of the spleen tissue here looks a little bit ragged as opposed to this real smooth area here. So I think we have a splenic injury and this is a uh, probably subcapsular hematoma with perhaps a tear in the, in the capsule that's allowing some of it to have an abnormal configuration, an atypical configuration, unlike that which we see for a subcapsular splenic hematoma. Uh, here we have, so that's the liver and spleen. Let's take a look at the pancreas. Here's the body of the pancreas. Here's the tail of the pancreas. Let's see if this pancreatic tail goes right to the splenic hilum. Well, it's a little short, so it stops here but it's certainly trying to get there. So this is the splenic hilum. Here is the splenic tail and the spleen, I mean, here's the pancreatic tail and the pancreatic tail does not go all the way to the splenic hilum. So liver, spleen, and pancreas have the abnormalities in the liver and spleen that we've just discussed. The gallbladder has been removed and I see what look like surgical clips but we have metal of other etiology there too. So the, some of these at least look like they're probably surgical clips, but some could also be bullet fragments in this patient that obviously has had a gunshot wound to the abdomen. Uh, the adrenal glands, let's look at the adrenal glands. We always have to check those because if we don't check them, they don't jump out at us like the liver and spleen and pancreas do. So we have to make sure we have a list of things that include the adrenal glands. And uh, let's just take care of the abdominal aorta. That looks okay too. 
So now we're left with the kidneys here that we've got to evaluate. And this left kidney shows an abnormal enhancement pattern. And, and one of the things I want you to learn is that <clears throat> you want to say everything about every finding, but you have to start out with short, succinct statements that are accurate, even if not very complete. So I could just start out by saying there is an abnormality of the left kidney. This occupies probably at least half of the volume of the left kidney. We have some areas of normal enhancing renal cortex, whereas others have a very amorphous appearance. A, a disruption of the normal renal architecture is evident with uh, what looks like probably blood surrounding portions of the left kidney. And similarly, on the right side, not as extensive, but we have something that has a similar appearance as um, that we see on the left. But here we can see that it's in the lower pole of the right kidney. And you can kind of see a trajectory here. You can see that there is this directionality of this abnormality. And actually on the same image, you see something in this, in this vertebral body. So there's a channel, it looks like, that's been dug out or perforated through the vertebral body. So, and, and also you have air in the soft tissues here overlying the rib. You have a little marker on the skin, a skin marker here, which is what they do for penetrating injuries, stab wounds, or gunshot wounds. So I think what we have here is a gunshot trajectory that came in right here, went through the lower chest wall or the, the region of the ribs uh, into the abdomen, traversing the left kidney, then traversing this vertebral body. Let's see what vertebral body that is. There's T12, T12 I think. Yeah, so this is T12, and we go down one. So the L1 vertebral body. So the bullet went through here, caused air pockets to uh, appear between the muscle planes of the abdominal wall and inside the abdomen here through the, liver, or through the uh, left kidney, causing this severe renal laceration, trajectory through the L1 vertebral body, and then through the uh, lower pole of the right kidney. Here we have a large metallic bullet fragment right here that is at the end of that trajectory. So that fragment appears to be the main fragment that has lacerated the left kidney, penetrating penetrated the L2 vertebral body and then continued on through the lower pole of the right kidney. Here's another bullet fragment here. So, uh, and, and this may be another one here. So I think that this bullet has kind of fallen apart. Maybe some of it might have fragmented when it entered the body, but I think that uh, going through the vertebral body probably caused it to fragment more and send off fragments in different directions. This one continuing on rather straight. Uh, this, I'm not sure how it got here, but that certainly is a uh, bullet fragment with severe beam hardening artifact because it's made of lead typically. And that's very dense to uh, radiation and uh, the CT uh, images are going to show a significant beam hardening artifact when you have lead in the area that's being imaged. Okay, so that's the story with that. And uh, I think that the bullet probably broke apart a little bit when it was when it after it went through the vertebral body. And that's why we have a couple different fragments here. And somehow these things can ricochet around inside the abdomen a little bit. Uh, if we look down lower, 
We want to be thorough in our evaluation. Do we have free fluid in the pelvis? No. So there doesn't seem to be any free intraperitoneal fluid. So that's interesting because we have this splenic finding, which sure looked, sure looked like there was some blood associated with the spleen, but it seems to be cordoned off in some manner so that it's not a true uh, subcapsular hematoma. I think it's partially subcapsular and that there's a tear in the capsule and this stuff just has just stayed close to the convexity of the spleen and hasn't trickled down yet at least to the other areas of the abdomen because ordinarily when you have a splenic laceration you get free intraperitoneal fluid, free fluid in the abdomen and likewise when you have a liver injury uh, usually that will communicate with the peritoneal space and therefore you will get peritoneal blood or hemoperitoneum Okay, uh, one other thing here. Let's look at the bowel. Let's not forget about the bowel. So let's look here at the, here's small bowel and we're in the right lower quadrant. So ordinarily we see cecum when we're up above the pelvic rim like this, but this must be a high cecum, so we'll go up a little higher. Yes, here we are coming into the cecum and this is the ileocecal valve. So backing down again, here's the terminal ileum. And as I go up, we have the cecum and the ileocecal valve here. So we can follow the colon. Look closely at the wall of the colon here. We follow the colon. We'll follow it as a transverse colon. We'll follow the transverse colon up to the splenic flexure. We'll sp follow the, sp the splenic flexure down as the left colon here. So here's the splenic flexure, here's the left colon. And right here, something funny happens. That wall looks thickened and a little bit irregular, and it's right near where we have these air pockets where we know that the bullet entered. So there's something funny going on with the colon there. And as we go down, it assumes more of a normal caliber, normal appearance in the left colon. And then that left colon should go into the sigmoid colon indeed and sigmoid colon goes up and then it goes down like this and continues downward as the rectum so if we go to the coronal images maybe that'll shed some light on this left colon possible trauma and sure enough here if you look at this is all left colon this is all left colon only this area has this thickened wall appearance it's at the same level as this small pocket of air in the adjacent soft tissues that are near the left kidney. So I think it's clear that there has been not only damage to, the, to both kidneys and a, a small metallic fragment in the liver, but we have an abnormality of the left colon, which means this, this will need to be operated because that means that there's probably going to be spillage of, parit of uh, colonic content stool into the peritoneal cavity, even if it's just a small amount. I think that these air pockets that we're seeing here, at first I thought that they were coming from the direct injury itself, from the outside air coming in through the, the penetrating trauma of the bullet but now that I see that it's proximity to this colonic abnormality, I think we have, uh, a f we have perforation of the colon and we have to assume that this is in the perirenal space and it may not be intraperitoneal. In fact, it probably is not. This is probably at least partly a retroperitoneal leakage of air and perhaps other content from the left colon into the perirenal space um, but I'd still be concerned that there could be um, a small amount of free intraperitoneal air so this is going to have to be operated on okay and so there you have it a bullet injury causing laceration of the left and right kidney uh, 
apparently an injury to the spleen with at least partially a subcapsular hematoma that seems to be kind of cordoned off and not spilling freely into the peritoneal cavity. And we have a left colonic lesion that is a reflection of the trajectory of the bullet that is leaking air and presumably other bowel content. Uh, and so this would have to be examined uh, surgically. Okay, that's it for now.